Graphing log functions. What I want to do is first remember how to graph an exponential because log functions are going to be very closely related because they're just inverses of each other. So y equals 3 to the x, or f of x equals 3 to the x. Remember we had some a times b to the x, where a was our starting value, our y-intercept. So we don't have an a. And so if you want to write it as 1 times 3 to the x, you can see that our y-intercept is just 1. And b was our common multiplier, and that determined whether it was growing or decaying. In this case, it's 3, so it's going to be growing. We also always had our y equals 0 as our horizontal asymptote. And so it gets really close to the horizontal asymptote and grows. Remember, it was times 3, times 3, times 3. This is going up extremely fast. So how do we find the inverse of 3 to the x? Well, first thing, swap the x and the y. So we get x equals 3 to the y. Now to solve for the y again, we're going to need to take it and write it in log form. And so this is going to be log, and the base of our exponent becomes the base of our log. So log base 3 of our x equals y. Or if you want, y equals log base 3 of x. So with inverse functions, they completely reverse everything. And so y equals 0 becomes an x equals 0. And so your horizontal asymptote becomes your vertical asymptote. Your x-intercept was 0, sorry, your y-intercept was 0, 1 before. And so now our x-intercept is going to be 1, 0 because everything is reversed itself. And so imagine, right, that we talked about how the y equals x line is everything is reflected over there. So all these points over here are reflected over here. And so we're going to have a log graph that looks something like this. And now this is log base 3. But we can graph log of 10. And so if I say log, of, log base 3, so log of x divided by log of 3 on the calculator. Um, there's our graph right there. And so again, logs, we don't have any negative values over here. We can't take the log of a negative. Actually can't take the log of zero. And so where our domain before is now going to be our range, and our range is going to be our domain, they flip-flop. So what do we need to be able to graph every single time? If you just graph the log base 10 of x, I want you guys to, to know that the horizontal asymptote, or sorry, the vertical asymptote is going to be x equals 0 every single time. The intercept, 1, 0, is going to be your x-intercept, no matter what the base is. Because remember, 10 to what power is 1? 10 to the 0 power is going to be our y value every single time. So 10 to the, the 0 for the y equals our x. And knowing the shape, so it kind of looks like this. And so we've got the shape down. It's going to look like this. Or if it's negative, reflected, it's going to come down from the top and then scroll over. Domain and range. Domain, like we said, before our, our range was, with exponential functions, was greater than zero. Now our domain is going to be x is greater than zero. Our range is all real numbers. All these negative y values over here, all these positive y values up here and so all real numbers for our log graphs. Now let's talk about some more transformed ones kind of like we did prior. 
This log base 3, just like the base of the exponent and this log base 3, are not really going to have much of, of an impact. Um, plus 4 is inside with the x, and so that shifts it opposite of what we think it should do. So that's going to shift it left 4. This plus 2 is going to shift it up 2. So, our asymptote. Was this vertical line at 0? However, now it shifted to the left 4, so we're 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, we've got an asymptote here at x equals negative 4. Our domain. Our domain is shifted with that, and so we're going to get x is greater than negative 4. I'm sorry, I'll go back to the graph. Um, our x-intercept was 1, 0. Standard graph is 1, but now it's shifted to the left 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and up 2, 1, 2. And so we've got the asymptote x equals negative 4. We've got the point negative 3, comma, 2, and so we've got our graph that looks like this. The range, all real numbers. Y values continue this way, Y values continue this way. They go up very slowly, but nonetheless, they're still going to go up. All right. This negative 4, it could be just as much on the end, and it doesn't matter if you put it at the beginning or the end. What matters is that you realize it's a minus 4 that's not affecting the X. So it's got to be affecting the Y. So it shifts down 4. This minus 3 with the x, so it's opposite of how we think about it, and so it actually shifts it to the right 3. So, our vertical asymptote was at 0. That is shifted to the right 3. Our x-intercept was at 1. It shifted to the right 1, 2, 3 and it shifts down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And so our general graph looks like this. Talked about how our asymptote was x equals 3, because we shifted. Our domain was x has to be greater than that 3, because we can't plug anything in at 3, because we can't take the log of 0. And our range is still all real numbers. Notice how the domain is like the range of exponential functions. And the range is like the domain of exponential functions. So that's transforming and graphing log functions. And we'll hit the ground running when we get to class.